I don't doubt that one bit. <laughs> okay, we're going to video this so that people who couldn't get here with the weather can get a chance to um, check things out as well. This is about your first guitar chords. It's not for advanced stuff. Uh, Dylan's going to jump on some of that, but this is some of the, the basics of getting into playing guitar, so I don't know where everybody is, but that's where we're aiming, fat, aiming at. It's for someone just getting started, some logical chords to start with. Uh, sometimes folks will come in and just grab a chord book off the shelf, and off they go, and they've got a chord book of 500 chords. Yeah. What in the world chords do you start with? You know, somebody might be starting off with an A sharp diminished seventh, and it's like, well, it's going to be a long time before you're going to need that chord. So I, I always um, focus on your basic majors and minors first. Let's just get some basics out of the way. And I always thought that the, the easiest chord to learn that uh, anybody can pick up real quickly uh, is an E minor chord. But we're going to go over those things, but I want to just go over some basics on a guitar, just make sure everybody knows where we're at. If I'm talking about the first string or the sixth string, we want to make sure that you know where, where we're at. <clears throat> Most everybody thinks that this is the first string when they get started. It's actually the sixth string. It's the first string that you see, but it's really the sixth string on your guitar. It's the thickest string. And of course, that's your first string. Um, it's important to know the names of the notes on your strings. Many folks don't want to take the time to learn all the notes, and, and that's okay. But you at least should know the notes of your open uh, strings. For instance, E here, A, D, G, B, and E at the your high E, for instance. There's more than one E, for instance. On a piano, you see a piano, it starts over and it has, has different octaves. So does a guitar. So there's more than just one E. There are octaves, for instance. That's an E. That's an E. It, it's just twice as high. That's an E. Here's an E, and if I had 24 frets, I'd show you the last E. So there's more than one spot on your guitar. With music, you don't have a lot of notes. For instance, it just goes from A to G. So then it starts over and it starts over again and so on. Uh, most uh, as musicians, we normally count to four pretty much, and we start all over again because five and six, you know, before you know, we'd have to take our shoes off. So we just keep things simple. Um, so, uh, with that said, I, I've always stressed how important it is to play with a, a metronome, if you have a metronome hanging around. Um, it's important to stay in time. It's, it's so common to be able to go through parts that you're familiar with at a decent speed and then slow down on the parts that you're not sure about. That works okay by yourself, but as soon as you go to lock in and play along with a few other people, that's a problem. So uh, it's important to, to grab a, a metronome or a drum machine or something that you can play along with and play along at the same time. Another thing I want to hit is uh, we get this question asked a lot. Should I start off with an uh, acoustic guitar or should I start with an electric guitar? It really doesn't matter. What I would suggest to you is which guitar excites you the most because the, um, the quickest way to you learning is having that guitar in your hands and playing it. So if you're excited about watching people play acoustic guitar, get an acoustic guitar. And if you want to rock out on electric guitar, we'll start there. Don't start here and then go there. Uh, I would start right there because if you if you like electric guitar music, that's going to be in your hands more. It's going to get you excited more. Therefore, you're going to play it. Now, which guitar is easier to play? The electric guitar, for these reasons. Number one, it has thinner strings, easier on your fingers. Uh, the, the strings are generally a little closer to the fingerboard as well. Less distance to, play, to, to push them down, and again, easier to play. And then thirdly, you don't have the body of the guitar here, uh, so for a lot of folks, they find it easier to hold. So that's why I would point to electric guitar. But I'm using an acoustic guitar because it's kind of handy and uh, it rings out real nice. That's what everybody like, loves about an acoustic guitar, just big open chords and such. So with that said, what would be the first chord that I would show somebody? I always suggest an E minor chord. I think it's the easiest chord that there is uh, for a guitar, and I'll point that out for you here. These are chord uh, or fretboard diagrams, basically, and so you understand, this is basically this guitar with a nut being right here at the top. And these are your frets coming down, coming across, and of course your six strings coming down. So this is just this section of this guitar, these first three frets. We're going to stay there for a little while. And uh, on our fingers, we're going to number one, two, three, and four. So when I put a number there, that's where your, your finger goes. So let me draw out an E minor chord for you real quick. Where is 
Okay, what I have is some O's above these strings, basically telling you that those are open. Mm -hmm. We're not going to finger those at all. If there was an X there, that means you don't play that string. We'll explain how that goes in a minute. The two and the three, what's that about? Again, one, two, three, four on our fingers. These two fingers are going to hold those two strings at the second fret. Notice the first fret is empty. The second fret is where we're at here. So we're going to take this guitar to show you just how this is on the diagram. We're going to put our second finger there, our third finger right beside it. We're at on here. We, there's a lot of space here, but we want to be right behind the fret, not on top of the fret, because we can deaden the, str the no, uh, string from, from ringing. We don't want to be too far backwards because you have to press harder than you would if you were closer to the fret. So as close as you can to the fret, that's comfortable. Notice that I can't be exactly there because I have a finger in the way. So as close as you can to the fret without going over it, that's comfortable. You want to get your thumb on the back of the neck as much as possible. I see a lot of guitar players with this thumb up here, and that happens a lot. But it's easier to play, especially when you get into bar chords later on, with that thumb on the back of the neck. Think of it like a pair of pliers gripping in. If you just had one side of the pliers, you have to press harder. Therefore, it's tougher. So in the beginning, especially, make sure you get that thumb on the back of the neck. You want to squeeze in nice and tight. That's an E minor chord. Let's read that on there for you. Now I've got E and a little M. The little M designates minor. If it was a, a big M, it would actually designate a major chord, which is different than a minor chord. For instance, a major chord sounds like this. And a minor chord sounds sad. It's a, you know, that's your difference between the majors and the minors, basically, that, that difference in sound. The third is flatted, uh, half step, but nothing we need to get into today. That's your E minor chord. The sixth string is open. The first, second, and third strings are open. The second, uh, the fifth and fourth strings are placed at the second fret, just like that. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to learn another chord with one simple movement. When you see just an E, and it doesn't say major or minor, you just assume that it's a major chord. It doesn't have in music. They don't. If you see a G, for instance, it's just a regular G chord. It's not a minor or major kind of thing. You just know right off the bat. If it doesn't say anything else, it's a major chord. So there's our E chord. We've only changed one thing on this on this chord. We've went from our E minor chord here. We put down our first finger. You notice the one there. Our first finger comes on, and now we have a major chord. Minor. Major. So you've got two chords with one simple movement. Okay? So now we're going to take that same chord shape like this, and we're going to drop it down one set of strings. What I mean by that is you're going to see my fingers go down one set of strings. We've learned another chord. We've hardly done anything with our fingers, and we're already up to three three chords. That's why I start with these, these chords, because it's easy to get anybody to play three chords in no time flat. So let me di diagram that out for you real quick. Now you notice something. I put an X above the sixth string. Let me explain why I did that. There's our A minor chord. If you play that sixth string, it's a little different. It would actually be an A minor slash E to be uh, correct. We're not playing that. We're just playing a straight A minor chord. A with a little m, again, designates a minor chord. So now, in review, we've got E minor. We've got E with just simply placing down the first finger. And then we dropped everything we had here down one set of strings this way. Okay, now we're up to three chords. All right. Now, as you're playing it, this is your first first few chords. This is like riding a bike, falling off and skinning your knee a couple times. All of a sudden, when you're trying to play it, maybe it sounds like you know you got these dead notes. 
There's a couple reasons why you have a dead note. Okay. Number one, you need to press harder. For instance, if I don't press hard enough on this, this string, I get this instead of that. Second reason you'll get that is you are pressing in the wrong spot. Maybe you're over top of it instead of we're too far back. If you're pressing in the sweet spot there, you'll get a nice clean sound. The third reason it might be not might not be playing is you're pressing in the wrong spot. Or you have, I'm sorry, you have something in the way. For instance, another finger. If we were doing a C chord, for instance, maybe you're laying your fingers down and you, you got something, somebody in the way. So look for those three things. Make sure you're pressing down hard enough using that thumb in the back of the neck. Make sure that you're in the right spot behind the fret, as close as you can as the fret, but not over top of it. And thirdly, make sure you don't have another finger in the way that's dampening it, the back back side of a, of a finger, for instance. Okay, now we're going to do something really cool. We're going to take this finger here that's on the, on the uh, second fret of the third string, and we're going to move it up to here. Okay, we're going to take it from here to here. Now we have a C chord from an A minor to a C chord. We just move one finger again. We're up to four chords. So you get someone just starting. Bing, bang, boom. I've got four chords under my belt. That's going to make a C chord for us. So watch how... How easily this is with with a hand movement here. E minor, E. Drop everybody down one set of strings. Don't, don't play the, the top string, the sixth string. Have an A minor. Move one finger. C chord. We're up to four chords already. Okay. What I would suggest is take your first two chords, your E minor and your E start strumming them. Take your pick and uh, tap your foot along. As you tap your foot, the speed at which you tap it is going to be the uh, tempo of your, of your song. Start slow. We all want to start way too fast. Anytime you're having trouble with something, just continue to slow it down at, a, at the same pace until you can play it cleanly without problems. If you're, if you're having problems, you're, you're going too fast. So we're going to take that E minor chord. We're going to tap our foot. Generally, when you're tapping your foot to a song, you're tapping out what's called quarter notes. And in a basic song, four, four timing, there's four taps, four beats, and one measure. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. And let's do the second bar as an E. Okay, so we're going to go from E minor. back. You want to be able to do that in your sleep. And as you notice, there's not much movement. My first finger just comes on and off. Okay, then you can practice things like half notes, for instance, where you'll, you'll, you'll play. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm basically playing every other beat now. I'm playing on one and three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. Of course, whole notes would be one out of every four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, like that. Now let's go from the, uh, let's say we're going to go from the E to the A minor. Okay, take two chords and beat them up, is what I like to say, until you get really comfortable with them. And then take, add a new chord. So now we've, we've got these chords down, no problem. Let's go from our E chord to our A minor chord. Now we've got some more movement. Again, we're going to go from here to here. We're going to play the sixth string on the E chord and not play it on the A minor chord because this first string is actually an A. We want the A heard in our A minor chord, not the E. Okay? So we're going to go uh, quarter notes. We're going to strum one on every beat that we tap our foot from E to A minor. Now you 
if you notice, when I come off from the E chord to the A minor, I didn't take my hands way off and, and that kind of thing. You want to you want to bear move your fingers just as, as the slightest amount that you have to, basically, because the more you move them, the slower you're going to be with, with your chords. Of course, later on you go. Take your fingers way off. There's no reason to. Just simply drop them down. You hardly have to move them at all. The same thing with your other when you do other chords. Less movement is better. It's not going to mess you up um, waiting for a chord to happen or, or the strum pattern or, or something. So back and forth. Chord. Today. Then uh, I would throw in something like uh, eighth notes. Now we're going to go down up. This is a little trickier for new people. What happened? They'll catch their, their pick and they'll fl pick will fly out of their hands and everything. You want to glide across the strings. Down, up, down, up. I don't know if you can see my hand very well here, but you're just doing this, gliding the, the pick along the string. Now, if you're doing this with your tap, with your foot, when you were when you're down, you're, you're down, and when you're up, you're up. Just follow your foot. Just like that. Um, as you continue to go, you can start adding different things. Imagine yourself as a conga player or a bongo player, and think of different rhythms that you can come up up with. First, make them make them simple. Would you, like those are very very simple, obviously. But as you can go, you can start mixing them up and go. Then you can add in that up up strum, for instance, or down. There you would notice, for instance, I did a down, then I did I skipped the up. I went down. Down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Okay? That's a little trickier because you have to skip it. But just keep your, your foot tapping. You can listen to some songs that you like. Think of some just basic songs. Don't get into nothing real crazy. But you, you can continue to add things as your ear hears it. And it's a song as you feel the song. When we have the drummer play, you can watch his, his kick drum, his snare, and his hi-hats. That's what's going to give you the key to the feel of this song. And you want to kind of match in there and just kind of smooth, smoothly run right in. Obviously, just down. This is going to work Spice it up some. And you don't want to do the same chord pattern all through the song. Listen to the drummer. So there's times where he's going to accent some things and you'll hear it coming in the song and instead of that same strum. different things like that. That's how you spice it up. Listen to the drummer, they'll help you a lot. Or, or listen to the vocalist, if you have no drummer. Listen, think of those parts where it's coming in and accent it. Sometimes, you know, you're just going to have those one-timers, you know, for a whole note. And then you're going to go... You think of build, building up the part, quieting it down. And with the chorus, a lot of times you're you're just wailing away now in the chorus. That's the, the hook of the song, basically. But but it, maybe in the verse we're going to quiet it down and let the singer tell the story. Do the same thing with your guitar as you as you play. Give it parts where it's quieter and it's louder. You know, work the song essentially. Let's get back to this. We went from an A minor to a C with moving that from here to here. Those two chords work very well together. The C uh, and the A minor. The A minor is actually its relative minor. It's like its, it's cousin, for instance. You're going to go from the C to the A minor. Let's just take the basic strums at first. Add a whole notes, do do 
quarter notes, do half notes, do down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. The down up thing that you were you weren't really get that down until you can really do that nice and smooth. Then you can start doing things where you're skipping one and, and so on and, and adding different things. Let's see. Okay, so now that we've got these four chords out of the way, the most two logical chords to add to that would be a G and a D. You're tossing a G and a D there, and there's a ton of songs that you can already start playing. And you've seen how easy those four chords were. Let's show you the G and the D. Okay. Okay, there's more than one way to play a chord. For instance, let's give you an example. A lot of people will play this with their first and second finger. The reason I like to do it with my second and third finger is because it makes so much sense over here. Now I just have to add that first finger down. Especially when I'm showing someone new, there makes no sense to use my first and second finger there. But now I have to show them a new fingering pattern to, to get to the E. You see, instead of instead of changing my whole finger fingering pattern, I just simply drop my first finger on it, and now I have the E. That's why I like to finger this chord without the first finger and second finger. But it's not like it's wrong, it's just a different way of doing it, and that's why I like to do this. The G, for instance, has a couple of different ways of fingering. One, two, four. That's the most popular way of fingering it. Some people will put the third finger in. Sometimes you'll see a guitar player play it like this. It all depends on the situation. If I'm going to use a G suspended fourth, then I want to finger it this way because I can go back and forth between the G and the G suspended fourth. It makes sense. Okay. Rather than going from here to here all the time, that doesn't make any sense. So it all depends on where you're heading in the song. Uh, Tequila Sunrise by the Eagles. Had that little phrase in it. So I obviously wouldn't want to finger it like this. It's a little tougher to do it with this this way. Um, so that's why I, I would suggest to finger the G chord like this uh, in the beginning. Yikes, that's ugly. Okay, so yeah, that's our G chord. And uh, show it to you real slowly here. We've got the second finger, the middle finger, right there on the third fret of the sixth string, right behind the fret again. Thumb on the back of the neck as much as possible. First finger is on the fifth string, right behind the second fret. And our pinky, the little guy that a lot of people don't like to use, but you got all, you have four fingers up there. Let's use them all. Right there. You see how those middle three strings there just sing right out. It's a nice chord. Another way to play a G, for instance, that sounds kind of sweet, is add your third finger on the third fret of the second string. That's also a G. Just like this is a G. Okay? It's just a different inversion. Maybe Leonard will get into inversions later on. In a G chord, we have three notes. A G, a B, and a D. It doesn't matter how you play them, although you would want the G in there with the, what's called the root position, which for us guitar players is the lowest note that we're going to hit. There's our G note. There's our B. There's our D. So actually, that's a G chord. We're adding another G here. We're adding an either, either a B here or a D here. Doesn't matter. Both notes are still in the song. And here's our G. So that's why that's a G chord. That's a G chord. Or I heard this way, it doesn't matter. You're still hitting G, B, and D. So, okay, let's go from there. Next logical chord would be a D. There's our D chord. Fifth and sixth strings, we're not playing. Why? Because we want our D note in. That's our D note. That's the lowest D note we have unless we tune this guy down, which we're not going to. We're in standard tuning. So notice you have the first and second uh, fingers kind of skipping a string. First finger's on the third string, second finger's on the first string, and the third finger's right smack in the middle. You got a little V going on there. You're going to play from the fourth string down. We want, when we play a guitar, we want to play over the sound hole as much as possible. You get the warmest sound of your back here. You get this right, real bright, tinny sound. Now, you can use that to your advantage sometimes. You can kind of go back and forth to get a little different sounds. And you heard me that one time kind of build up a part. 
was what palm you did. You take this back of your palm right here, place it over just in front of the saddle. This is the bridge, bridge pins. This is the saddle. Just place it right up over top of there and it mutes it. Good times to do that in a song when you're kind of just sitting back, you know, in a song. So anyhow, um, now we get a D. And uh, Sweet Home Alabama, you got D, C, G. They made an awful lot of money with those three chords. They tossed it an F, I think, just because, you know, just a... Just to throw a monkey in the wrench or a monkey wrench in. Or, but basically, there's tons of songs with three chords in it. Maybe tons of more songs with four chords. In fact, we have some books that just have three chord songs in it all the way through. There's another book that has four chord songs in it all the way through. With just a couple movements, we've got six chords. You can play a ton of songs with just those six chords. Uh, Dylan will get farther into this with you, but I just wanted to cover some of the basic chords and which chords made the most sense to start off with and get you rolling. Some basic strum patterns and that sort of thing. We've got some fantastic instructors to take you farther. We've also got a ton of books. So I'm going to wrap up here because we're a little bit uh, over into Leonard's time. So thanks for coming. We're going to get Leonard Arthur. If, if you haven't heard, heard yet, he's a wonderful uh, pianist, but he plays so many different instruments. It's, it's pathetic. I'm jealous. So thanks for coming out and give us a couple minutes here. We'll get Leonard rocking for you. Good job, Dave.